There's a real club feel on today's EMVN show. We'll be looking at smoke machines and also 20 somethings making decisions whether to go E or not. And the impact of future tech. I guess any discussion on future tech has to start with the lithium ion battery, uh, something that we've been using on e-bikes for many years now. And of course, John Goodenough, who's a professor of engineering and the inventor of lithium ion battery, we know he's actually been working on a glass battery yeah, sure. in recent years, but there's also loads of other uh, battery tech going on, such as lithium sulfur batteries, and you've got graphene polymer cells. There's lots going on in, uh, in the worlds of, of battery management at the minute. And what does this all mean for us, Chris? I think it comes down to faster charging. Mm. More range, of course. Yeah, smaller, lighter, mm. and of course they discharge quicker. So out on the trail, yeah. what's, what impact is it having us on the trail if, well, if, I think if all these developments do happen? Definitely, I think a big shift we'll see of weight. So we're gonna lose a lot of weight from the battery because that's a massive part of the bike. Mm. I think shrink into a smaller battery is gonna you know, make those bikes super, super light. Yeah. Probably gonna see differences in frame designs, You know, loads of cool stuff going on. But then I think you know, they're gonna be charging quicker. So mm -hmm. you'd be able to do that lunch stop, which might now take an hour and a half. Yeah. The lunch stop might actually take 30 minutes in the Damn. future. Is that good or bad? Uh, yeah, good <laughs> point. But uh, I think you know. I think it's going to increase our, increase the range. Yeah. So even more so, it's going to be about a rider fitness mm -hmm. because the bike will be doing anything exactly. you, you know you want yeah. it to. So. So what about motors, Steve? You know, we've seen a lot of tech going on with batteries. What would you like to see coming up with motors? Well, actually the battery tech's got to happen first and foremost, because mm -hmm. it hasn't, hasn't quite got there yet. Yeah. Uh, but with motors, I'd imagine everyone's going to be thinking about, you know, more power, mm -hmm. lighter. I mean, lighter's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of power, I don't think, uh, you know, we've proved in the woods that sometimes you can have too much power. Yeah. Sometimes le you know, less power mm -hmm. enables you to get up those climbs because I think it's all about the power delivery and the software more than actually raw power in itself. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd like to see a smaller motor. That'd be quite nice. You know, these motors are really bulky. And of course, the weight, but then it needs to be that weight involved in it. But I think a smaller motor would allow frame manufacturers combined with that battery tech. Well, they're pretty really good. As, they're pretty good at the minute, you yeah. know. And you know, if if you ha actually hold like something like a Shimano E seven thousand motor, it's incredibly compact. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it'll get even smaller, but yeah. there's not much to it at the moment, you know. But things are well and. Way we're seeing smaller batteries, we're seeing batteries with greater range, we're seeing quieter motors, smaller motors, and good software to go with these bikes. Yeah. Uh, what was quite interesting last week, I saw a company called Great Bikes mm -hmm. from Croatia. Now, yeah. the parent company is actually Rimac, who make that ridiculously fast I car, that. the one cool. that Richard Hammond crashed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, it's actually so Rimac is, I think, is about 500 employees, uh -huh. but but you know, Great Bikes is already 35 RD people involved in this Whoa. company. And uh, they've just been, they've been working on this bike for four years, but yeah. some really neat touches. I think first thing I want to point out is the fact that it's got, um, they've teamed up with Croatian Telecom. Uh, um, T-Mobile, I think it's T-Mobile. So you've got free internet on this bike for four years up to 2022 or maybe beyond. Mm -hmm. And you simply uh, bolt on your phone as a dashboard right. and some really neat touches. Cool. You see the camera on it? Yeah, I saw the cameras, front and rear cameras. So I think they do like a live stream from your rides as well. So you can record on the spot front and rear. Um, the first person to send in a picture off their great bike to EMBN gets a free hat. <laughs> and the next thing I saw on them was the uh, retro rewind feature. So basically if you have a cool bit, you know, a cool line called jump or a cool crash right. you can actually rewind the footage and save that to like a 30 second or a one minute clip to your phone and it downloads straight away to the uh central like system do on you, it do you know what i really liked mm -hmm. i really like the fact that you can tune in your own uh, heart rate zone so if you want to train or ride at a certain heart rate say between 130 and 150 yeah uh, if you go above 150 the bike will give you more assistance so right. if you go below 130 mm -hmm it'll give you less assistance. So I think it's a really that good, really good training cool. tool there. And what I did like was the security system on it as well. Basically those front and rear cameras, um, it's also got like a live track thing on it. Yeah. So as soon as a bike is moved from its location or gets tampered with, yeah. you can uh, like uh, connect well, to it, view it. And, and you, you can, can kill the motor. Yeah, that's it. You're like a uh, remote kill as well. Yeah. So if you steal it, it's going to be no good to you. So I think, you know, it's great that a company such as Rimac is getting involved in e-mountain yeah. bikes. Um, so that bike's actually for sale at the minute between mm -hmm. six 6,499 euros and 7,499 euros. Comes in three sizes, yep. I do believe. And uh, in terms of the interesting geometry, actually, Chris. Yeah, it does. Um, 
It's got a 480 mil chainstay. Now mm. that is actually one Pretty of the long. longest chainstays mm. in the market. I can only think that the Mondraker level has got a 490 mil chainstay and the Lapierre Overvolt's got a 485 mil chainstay. Now what this does is actually makes is it makes a forward weight bias. So right. that, that bike is actually going to climb pretty well, I think. Mm, it does look it, doesn't it? Yeah. And in terms of the, there's actually two different models. Mm -hmm. There's a 450 watt motor model and a mm -hmm. 250 watt motor model, which is obviously a pedelec and restricted to 25 kilometers an hour. Cool. They've got a big range as well, haven't they? Out of that battery, I think they're saying 100 k or 62. Yeah, it's a 700, 700 watt hour battery. Yeah, big battery on it. Yeah, yeah. it looks a really cool bike. So yeah, when we're looking at uh, you know the future impact of of tech, then I think you know it's great to have somebody like Rimac and Grape involved in the sport. E Enduro kicked off in Alassio in northern Italy on the weekend. Nice. Uh, Chris, look at all those chargers. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, but it's great to see that Marco Fontana, a former cross country World Cup pro racer, was riding. He didn't win. He didn't win. Quite but he certainly first. looks very fast on his e bike. Stylish. Yeah, amazing. Uh, and then meanwhile, down in the southern hemisphere in Chile, mm -hmm. uh, Mountain Bike, uh, who hold the National Enduro Series, um, had their uh, round on the weekend, and it uh, seems it was well attended. And here's the podium shot here, Chris. God, who's that? Philippe Parizo won then. Yeah. It looks really cool. Is that Kinevo? Yeah. Fox 40's on there as well. It's a full on downhill e bike. Nice. Yeah. I bet the tracks are pretty full on too, right? Chris, that's a rather nice new red t shirt you've got on. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? You like that? Yeah, it is. Great. Especially after Wales won the Grand Slam on the weekend. Oh, enough about football, Steve, anyway. Rugby, actually. Oh, is it? Uh, well, you need to check out the EMBN shop. Loads of cool new stuff in there. We've got the hoodies, the red tees, the olive tees, black tees. Isn't it olive? Classic is it? tees. Olive. olive. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was olive. But loads of cool stuff in there. Be sure to check out the EMBN shop as the knights are drawing out. Plenty to talk about this week, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I'm going to show you this. Mm -hmm. This little bike shelter on a bike uh, on a bike path in yeah. Germany, really beautifully made. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, look at the little window on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like a big pile of logs disguised in it, and I love that window as well. It's meant to like frame the countryside. Can imagine having a bike shed built out of wood like that. How high it is! It's yeah. amazing. Now, uh, also, uh, Aaron Gwynn. Mm -hmm. Now, Aaron Gwynn, uh, a multiple World Cup downhill champion, recently signed for Intense Cycles. Obviously, Intense make the Intense Taser e-bike, and it seems he was shuttling at a downhill race. Yeah, he was out there in the week whilst the shuttle wasn't running, so he was cruising up the hill and then just, you know, taking it nice and easy on the way down, looking for some line. So, yeah. something we'll probably see a lot of the pros doing. Well, you know what? I've done it myself, like, mm -hmm. on, a, on a local race a couple of years ago. Uh, me and my mate, we went up there the night before. Mm -hmm. We did, I think we did 10 runs, mm -hmm. literally just scoping all the lines really? there because when you go to a downhill race yeah. you're reliant on the uplift you're going to queue for the uplift mm -hmm. and all that palaver yeah. whereas you can take you can go at your own speed you can check your lines out i think it's a great way of uh, and we'll, i think we'll see a lot more of it definitely I think we'll see Hope a lot so. more of it i saw cam mccall out with his brother he was out with his dad and uh, i think tyler's daughter or cam's daughter out on the trail four different generations of riders cam was saying he's never been out on a ride with his dad on uh mountain bikes he's always a, a flat track racer i think back in the day fire service. Cam did a really cool video over on YouTube as well, so be sure to check that one out. Yeah, and finally, we're always talking about demo, e-bike demo events here on EMBN. Now, Ghost have got a really packed schedule of test events over the next uh, six months, so uh, check out uh, where they are. They're all over Europe, and you can uh, have a test ride on one of their e-bikes. Uh, interesting story, Chris. Uh, I was in the woods a couple of weeks ago with Brandon mm -hmm. shooting a video, and yeah. there were two young lads there. One had a Trek Remedy, 150mm mm -hmm. travel, and the other had a Candidal Matera right. e-bike. Been in the Forest of Dean today uh, shooting a video, and throughout the day, these guys, Sam and Dan, have been pretty much riding in the same areas as us. Now, it's quite interesting that Sam's got a Trek Remedy acoustic bike, whereas uh, Dan here has got a Cannondale Matera e-bike. Uh, guys, you seem to have been doing hundreds of runs today. Smashing out since 11 That's in the morning. Been so with the electric engine. You take a <laughs> toe, take a toe with me. Oh, okay, right. Hook, it, hook it over the seat and you, you can hold it. on to it. And I can... get it, I get it. Um, Sam, uh, why did you choose, if he's got an e-bike, why have you got a Trek Ramblin on e-bike? Well, I've been riding long and yeah. I thought it would be good to jump in on an authentic bike. Authentic? Yeah, real mountain bike in to start off with. <laughs> oh, Dan, what are you going to say about that? Oh, I don't know. I think working smarter is the best way, isn't it? Yeah, smarter, not harder. Yeah, uh, work smarter, not harder. Hold on a minute. So, you've only just started mountain biking, right? Yeah, three weeks. What, three weeks? Yeah. Crikey. Dan, how long have you been riding? Years, years and years. 
voice of experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How long do you think before Sam gets an e-bike? I'd say at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it doesn't matter, does it? It's you know. like you, you, you seem to be having a great time in the woods today. Keeping up to each other. Like, yeah, yeah. No one's leaving and, each other uh, behind. And so I know it's the end of the day. You've been sessioning all the jumps here. Yeah. Yeah. So he's trying to get his basic skills up and all stuff. Right. So yeah. I'll start jumping properly. Yeah. yeah. So you've been doing a wide range of riding mm -hmm. then. That's why yeah. we've done all the intermediate to you know the yeah. harder stuff and finish off with a bit of training at the end. Great. Guys, thanks for your time. No problem. Yeah, I no won't worries. hold you back. <laughs> See you again. Cheers. Thank you very much. I think the pair of them have got their bikes for about two thousand pounds. Right. There's all of this talk about e-bikes being expensive. So there's two twenty somethings uh, making some big decisions on their bikes, spending Separate a ways. fair bit of yeah. better bit of cash still. But um, authentic. I've not really heard that. I wonder what he means. Does he mean that he feels like he's doing like kind of proper mountain biking, and the e-bike is like not proper mountain biking? Do you know what? I think. It doesn't really matter. The pair of them are having a whale of a time. I like it. Welcome to Electrics. I'm going to show you how to do a backflip on an e-bike. Find a pretty big jump like this, then you want to come into it with as much speed as possible. Then just send it, pull back off the lip, look for your back wheel, which you'll never see. And if you do all those motions, then you'll probably just land on your wheels the other side. Easy. So approach the jump at a good speed, hit the lip, pull back. And there you go. Easy backflip. Boom. Hit the lip. Pull back. There you go. Easy backflip. Boom. Oh. So just going back to the great bike, Steve, that had some amazing stuff for the security on it, you know, but that isn't accessible on every single bike. So what can we do at home to protect our pride and joy? Big scary dogs! Oh yes, scary <laughs> dogs. Barbed wire. Uh, razor barbed wire. Alarm. Big heavy doors, Big gates, locks. locks, everything. But wow, else? come on, this has got to be better than that. Uh, well, actually, do you know what? We went to Raceco Cycles last week to do a video on how to test ride, how to demo an e-mountain bike, and Paul Tett had some interesting new technology. Now, e-bikes do not come cheap, so even more reason to keep them well protected. Now, I'm here with Paul Tett at Raceco Cycles. Uh, Paul, it seems a classic uh, situation which we're all faced with, you know, back alleyways or garageways, we've got razor wire, we've got uh, locks, we've got gates, we've got roller shutter doors, same as, right? Yeah, we've got something pretty uh, special tucked away inside here. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. There's yeah, a, challenge, like challenges. There's a nice specialised Levo in there. Yeah, um, and? Go and try and grab it out. So all I gotta do is get through the doors, grab the bike, and that's it. That's it, it's yours. Oh, God, really? Can't be that difficult. Right, here we go. Pull the doors up, in, get the bike, see you later, Paul Tat. That's it. Right, here we go. <laughs> hey, what the hell? Oh my God! Get me out of here! Get me out of here! What the hell? What the, what? Oh my God! That's intense. That is too intense. That is too intense. Get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. I mean, that is, look, look how far you're gonna go in. It's like, oh my God, and you've gone. You can't see anything in here. You can't actually even see the way out of here. It's like, where am I? It's like, I'm here, Brandon. Uh, I'm actually here. <laughs> I'm here. So clearly, or should I say unclearly, an hour later, we got the glitter ball in and the strobe light, and we had a right old party. The ultimate home disco machine, Paul. <laughs> no, seriously, there's a serious side to this, right? Yeah. Uh, nice. Tell us about it. Smoke block. Yep, so it's a new company I've set up. Um, yeah, basically, smoke machine, uh, if you can't see what you're trying to steal, then yeah, you can't take it. Yeah. Um, How so, much? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be retailing at 12 dollars mm -hmm. um, It's going to be available through our website. Um, at the moment, just ourselves selling it. It's a good insurance uh, system, right? I mean, you think yeah. about it, I mean, if you've got a couple of bikes, maybe, you know, pressure washer, whatever you've got in your garage, probably adds up to a lot of money, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of people don't realize how uninsured they are. Yeah. Um, household insurance only goes up to a certain amount. Yeah. So when you add up a house alarm in comparison to one of these, this actually physically stops them in yeah. their tracks. I tell you what, it stopped me. Yeah. I was absolutely terrified <laughs> of it. So there you go, smoke block from uh, Paul at Race Car Cycles in Stourbridge in the Midlands. Hi, nice Paul, or not, thank you. <laughs> 
we had a lot of feedback from last week's show where we were talking about second-hand e-bikes. We had Steve the Decorator come in with his 300 pound Levo yeah. bargain from eBay. Yeah, Steve the Deck Davis is a hell of a bike too. Yeah, it was cool, wasn't it? But we had quite a few comments in from that video. Uh, Spectre25123 uh, says, mm. beware of stolen bikes, ask to see the receipt. Of course, that's Absolutely. the first thing I would do when I go to check a second-hand e-bike yeah. out. But Oleg Petrovich has been in. I paid that for my helmet. No way. If you can't play, don't come to the table or save like I did. It's an expensive helmet, 300 quid. It is. It's, but it's a bit harsh, harsh as well, don't you find, yeah, Chris? Yeah, I think it's pretty harsh words, but uh, I think yeah, everyone loves a bargain, right? Good on, good on Steve getting that bike. Uh, Stuart, meanwhile, Stuart Dumkop says, uh, how did the guy get that troily design from the Kinevo onto his Levo? Well, I think the Kinevo comes with that st uh, sticker pack, doesn't it? Or you can yeah. order it sec uh, uh, you know, from a, a specialised dealer. And of course, you just chopped it away, modified it to fit the Levo. Yes. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Definitely did look good. Uh, Michael E, where is a good place to shop for secondhand stuff? I'm in the market myself. Well, Ooh. Facebook Messenger, uh, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, yeah. Gumtree. I think social media is a good way of finding uh, some reputable bike shops that yep. do deal mm -hmm. uh, in secondhand e-bikes because you know that a lot of people now are, are trading their bikes in. You know, mm -hmm. e-bikes is what six, seven years old. Yeah, so there's been increasing, you know, an increasing amount of secondhand e-bikes in the market. So talking about Facebook bargains, Mark yeah. Smith has been in touch. He yeah. says he's seen a few on Facebook. They look stolen. Yeah. Battery held on by cable ties because they've lost the key, etc. Yeah, I mean, I've lost the key on bikes loads of times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think the thing, if you're going to go and buy a stolen bike... <laughs> well, don't buy a stolen bike! <laughs> if, if you're going to go and buy an e-bike, just make sure it comes not with... Not stolen! A, yeah, it's, stole, it's not stolen. <laughs> and it, but the main thing is that it comes with a charger because that's a sure sign, you know, that it's been stolen. If it comes just as a bike without any keys or a battery charger. Some background information mm. on that bike. Yeah, yeah ask, ask, ask a bit of history on it. Ask yeah. what he's been doing on it. Check out their profile as well. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take much, does it really? Where in the world? We're off to a load of places, Steve. I, what I want to know before we get switched on is how's old Colin getting on? Oh yeah, I had an update from him. Looks pretty nasty. Sent in a couple of pics. Big yeah. staples. Um, Oof, that looks a bit ragged, doesn't it? Yeah, How did he do that? A uh, big crash, he said. Um, three operations after having Ooh, my arm. Boy. Titanium hinge in there. Implanted in a titanium forearm, but he's back riding. He's that got a titanium good. forearm? Yeah, it looks like That's it. That's heavy so. duty, Colin. Iron Man. Take it easy. We're going to the Forest of Dean, Steve. I don't know if you can f find that. This is from the Enduro at the weekend. Keith yeah. Moon here, shredding it as well. Right. Keith Moon. I've heard Keith Moon before. Who's Keith Moon? He's one of the guys, one of the nice friendly guys out there on the circuit, attends okay, right. all the races, just made a big switch to e-bikes, so right. really cool guy. Oh, this is where's that? South, that South Africa? Yeah, we're going to Cape Town, South Africa. Eight-year-old Tom, Whoa. shredding it. What the... bike, what bike's he on? His giant uh, stance. Wow, that's cool, isn't it? It's pretty cool, isn't it? God, what do you think i jump, Chris? Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? For Looks eight like, years old, I, mean, I wasn't doing that. Eight. Think, what, building stone walls? No, but he's <laughs> submitted a load of pictures. Big airtime, already eight years old. Yeah, on nice, one, e nice one, Simon. What then is coming up on the channel this week? Well, on Friday, Steve, we've got a cool video. We headed to Raceco Cycles and shot a video on how to demo an e-bike, everything you need to take along to the shop and how you actually do it. Yeah, and then Sunday sees the return of Georgia Leslie in a video which uh, showcases trail bikes versus uh, e-mountain bikes, and that's on a downhill course mm -hmm. and some trails which are gently undulating. Nice. So it's it's not me versus George, it's basically seeing what is the fastest when it comes down to descending. Okay, the bikes are nice, looking forward to that one. Right, it's time to have a look at your bikes from around the world. Chris, give me that laptop. Uh, first of all, we have got uh, Shane from Australia and his High Bike 180. Mm. That's, that's cool. beautiful. I love the Hardcore way that's silhouetted Australia. against that background. Uh, I'm going straight in with a super nice on that. Sorry. Boom. Right. Got this one in from Frederick, 2019 Norco Site VLT2 out in Thousand Oaks, California. Whoa, beautiful background. That's nice, doesn't it? I have to hurry you. Um, I'm going to go that? for a nice, I think. Just okay. slightly, yeah, the rays cutting, cutting into it, the sun rays. The, ra the rays are nice. Nah. I can't quite see the bike. I'd have got, I'd gone one better than that. Oh, right, it's too nice. Uh, here we go. What have we got here? We've got a, a giant full E2 2016. Mm. From Om in Velenji in Slovenia. Wow, it's a strange ploughed like, field. Is it a ploughed field or a motocross track? I think it's a ploughed field. But more to the point, Steve. Nice or super nice? I'm moving on to uh, nice. giant another full E. Uh, o OSX Pro from mm. Sherwood Pines. Nice. 
Uh, Hammering my, the red room. My son Leon is about 10 minutes behind me, and I guess I really need to buy him an e bike. <laughs> ha ha! She so needs to get out of the I would be giving him, him, e him this. I would be giving him this giant when my high bike fly on and, and Mountain 10 arrives in September. Wow. That's a very kind dad you are, Jamie. Mm -hmm. So I think on that note, it's a super it's nice. nice. Got this one in from Dragos out in uh, oh, a Pen Penshurst Bike Park. Sylvester. To this. Look, got a Thud Buster seat post going on. So suspension seat post. I don't see too many of those, do we? No, you don't, dear. On a hardtail as well. Um, what do you thinking, Steve? Uh, moving on to. Oh, nice. my goodness me. Look at that. Bartley in Ensa in Spain. Route Zona Zero. Uh, wow. I mean, I've been to Enter. Have you been to Enter? I haven't, no. It does the look cool. riding okay. around there mm. is next level. I mean, and the, and, the, and, the, and the steaks and the wine as well, and it's just a hell of a location. Really, really dry climate there too. Is it? Uh, it's, for me, it's only going one way. What bike is it, by the way? Levo. Oh, it's a Levo, right. No, it's got to be super nice. Super sure. nice. So Pekka's been in touch. He's dropped us in a picture of his lap here. Cassis. Yeah, it looks really uh, nice. Do you know what, Pekka? I've been to uh, the Eagle's Beak with, with Jack, uh, one of the filmers, not far from here. Um, Ciotat, we had, uh, we had food there as well. It's a hell of a great spot. Mm. And the rocks in that area to ride bikes, e-bikes, is absolutely insane. Those look good. Uh, it's not actually far from where we did the recent uh, climbing video, the Rock, really? Rosh de Rock Run. Mm. So I think that, for me, is a super nice. Got to be super nice. Super nice yeah. I got this one in from Beat as well. Uh, Moustache Samadhi, 27 race, 2019 in Basel uh, in Switzerland. Uh, what do you reckon, Chris? It's nice, isn't it? It's a nice, yeah. Moving on. Ooh, from ploughed fields to crikey, the mumbles. mumbles. Is it really that muddy in the mumbles? You know, I'm a good place to ride e-bikes though. Yeah, that's that's, cool, that's uh, inspiring, that is. It's a Cube Sierra Hybrid 160. Mm -hmm. Uh, from Adam. I'm liking that shot. Liking I'm, the feel I, of that. Quite Riding different. out to the coast. I quite like the coast. I'm going to give that a... Super nice. Ooh, there you go. This one in from Mike is 2019 Turbo Levo out in the Otway Ranges in Victoria, Australia. Mm. Looks cool, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's nice. I think it's nice. Oh, we're out of the bike vault. That's it. We're out of the bike vault, Chris. Yeah, damn. We love seeing all your bikes here on EMBN. Be sure to send them in using the upload service. Details are on screen now. You don't know. Next week, it could be you. I reckon it will be. Vault. I reckon it'll be you next week. So that's it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN so we can continue to bring you uh, some great e mountain bike videos. Uh, in the meantime, check out the video uh, Man versus hill, or was that Egypt versus hill, where I basically took forever to climb a thousand foot hill in the south of France. Did look cool, really cool vid, I love that one Steve. But be sure to check out how to ride steps as well if you want to speed up your commute or get cool out on the steps, this is a really good video to check out. If you've enjoyed today's show, give us a thumbs up, drop some comments in the box below. That's it, see you next week. <laughs>